Good afternoon, everyone. So, welcome to the first lecture of refresh the computing. I am Dr. Rajesh, your course instructor. So, let's look at some details of the course. As you all know, this course is a co credit course. It has two lectures one tutorial and one lab. Tutorial is of one hour, lab is of two hours. All right. Okay, this is the grading policy. You have labs, uh, assignments which are uh, done in labs or sometimes even take home assignments. And then minor one, minor two, both of these are lab exams, not written test. The final exam is a written test. Okay, so as you can see, this course places a lot of weight on coding, on uh, practical. So you need to be good at coding to score well in the course. And uh, the best way, the simplest way is to attend labs, lectures, and tutorials. You need not put a lot of hard work. The only hard work you need to put is to have regular attendance. That's all. If you have regular attendance, everything will be easy. But if you don't attend, no matter how much effort you put outside, it will be very difficult for you. Okay? So simple thing, just attend all the components, lectures, labs, and tutorials. It will be much easier for you. So to perform well in the lab exams, you need to attend labs regularly and practice the problems given there, attempt the problems given there, okay, and also tutorials. Some practice problems will also be solved in the tutorials. All right. These are my office hours. So in case you have any doubts, if you want to meet me or approach me, you can approach during this time. Uh, my office is in uh, first floor faculty space, first cubicle. Um, so the first preference is to meet me in person. If it is not urgent, don't email. Meet me during the office hours. Only if it is urgent, only then email. Otherwise, for every small thing, if you email, there are you know 600 odd students, then I will not have any space to do any other work if you keep emailing. Okay. So first preference is this, and um, in fact, each of you will have a tutorial instructor. There will be four uh, default faculty associates. They will be assisting me in this course. So. You 600 odd students are sort of divided into eight sections. So each section will have a tutorial, and two sections together will have a lab. So your respective tutorial instructor is your tutor. So you can approach uh, him or her for any doubts you have, even uh, regarding the course or content or assignments. So you can take their help. In case they cannot solve your doubts, they can, then you can come to me. Okay. All right. So these are some ways in which we can communicate. I believe uh, you don't have any group email ID yet, right? So there is no way to communicate with you. So, but I think you all have Discord. So open Discord and join this channel right now. So until your group email IDs are created, even after that, we will continue our discussions on Discord. In case you have any doubts while solving assignments or any doubts in the post, you can post them. Either me or the tutors, or even your friends can uh, help resolving your doubts. Okay, I'll uh, make some announcements here. Um, once group email ID is created, so some I will make over email, some I will make on Discord. Okay, yeah, Euclid is a learning management system. In case you are having problem joining Discord right now, just note down this link, do it later. Okay, if you are joining, it's done, it's okay. Otherwise, go no down this link and do it later. Okay, Euclid is a learning management system. Euclid is nothing but Moodle. I don't know how many of you heard of Moodle. It's a learning management system where uh, we can post assignments, uh, quizzes, all those things, and uh, you can. Okay, I think I need to mute that tab. Okay, so, um, so we will be using Euclid regularly. So whatever lecture notes uh, that I use, I post it on Euclid by the end of the day. So you do not pay me asking for lecture notes. Usually by the end of the day, you can check them and it will be uploaded. Um, lecture notes, tutorial sheets, lab sheets, and even assignments which you need to solve, programming assignments, they will be uploaded there, you need to solve them. Okay, so Euclid is our main source. Your account will be created soon. And, um, so that is for me to post content for you to access. That's not for discussion. 
discussion is mainly through discord or in person during my office hours or um, through email but please use uh, email sparingly only if it is really required if it is urgent only then you email otherwise please approach me during office hours these are the resources for the course so we have a textbook and a reference book and we will also post some other resources on euclid um, you know some notes we will post some pdfs we will post some articles we will post even tutorial notes and lab sheets they will also be your resources and internet is generally is anywhere a resource see once you cross school once you come into uh, degree level you your pattern of learning will be very different you will now textbook is not will not be your main resource internet will be your main resource textbook will be a backup resource so you should be able to quickly look up something find it out find a solution right so apart from textbooks like i said the resources which we post they will be your main resources and internet is anyway always available to you so it will be like ad hoc learning there is a topic you look it up learn so these can be learned in a modular fashion you are given a section or a topic you have got a topic look it up online you will find some section you will find many websites particularly for programming you have something number of resources so there is no issue at all but in case you want to go in a slightly more um, um neat fashion that step by step i want to learn this topic then this topic you know or even if you want to look up a step uh, a sub topic in a organized way you can look up any of these textbooks that particular topic or chapter or section and you can look okay even if you miss any lecture a day you can look up the textbook or internet resources anything is fine okay so here are some important points to note before we begin the semester attendance is compulsory and it's extremely important if your attendance falls short of a certain percentage which will be announced to you later you will not be able to write the final exam okay so ensure that you maintain your attendance not only for administrative purposes but even in terms of learning like i said if you just regularly attend lectures labs and tutorials you will the course will be a breeze for you okay passing through the course is a breeze for you otherwise it will be very difficult okay so try to maintain regular attendance and uh, in case you miss minors no retest will be conducted whatever is the reason whether it's a genuine reason or uh, an invalid reason retest will not be conducted if it is a genuine reason your nsm marks will be extrapolated to your minors genuine reason says usually they are medical reasons you need to provide some proof medical certificate or whatever it is then uh, this option will be available for you your nsm exam marks will be extrapolated to minors if there is no proper reason if you can't give a proper reason then you will just get a zero in minus and you will be graded normally okay so that is an option and uh, mobile is not allowed in the labs i will give you more details about labs later this week there are no labs there are only tutorials labs will start from next week so whenever labs start mobile is not allowed in the labs you cannot access internet you can access only intranet and particularly youtube so once youtube is available to you all your assignments all your problem solving will be done on youtube that is the only thing which you can access you can't access internet okay you will get more details on that later and like i said your tutorial instructor will be your respective tutor or mentor for the rest of the course you can approach them in case of any doubts their office hours will be provided later okay any doubts so far all right so now let's uh, begin the course so why this course what is the significance of this course how is this course relevant to you right so this course itself has no prerequisites but this is a prerequisite for everything else future courses as well as placements as well as for masters anything you take this course is a prerequisite okay so let me explain it in a slightly more detail okay so you see whatever computation related 
courses or degree that you are doing can anyone tell me what is the core skill that is necessary for a computation related engineer right very good programming that is the core skill which is expected of any computer science degree student okay be it computer science ai or computation uh, electronics and communication uh, computer engineering whatever it is as long as the word computation is involved programming is the core thing okay so usually uh, for cs and ai students there are three core courses in your curriculum one is this introduction to computing then data structures and then algorithms any other course will be dependent on what you learn in these three courses because any topic you pick up be it uh, you know computer vision machine learning or uh, robotics or whatever it is you will need to deal with algorithms and algorithms in turn deal with data structures data structures in turn deals with your basic understanding of programming okay so these three courses are core courses in your curriculum and they are necessary even for future courses so whatever courses you do later be it uh, natural language processing or computer vision or whatever it is you will need to you know write some programs build some tools you see why do we call um, the software which we use be it ms office or uh, uh, or or a browser or a video player whatever they are we call them programs why do we call them programs because they are nothing but pieces of codes they are built by writing codes whenever you are opening a program you are running a code that is what is happening at the back end right so you being engineering students you can't remain as users of softwares you should be able to build softwares right it can be software or even hardware uh, you will have some courses related to that but you should understand the inner workings of these things right so the core or the crux for all of these things is coding you need to have an understanding of programming all right now one may say okay now i have tools like chat gpt where i can just instruct it in english and it will do the job for me not exactly you see still chat gpt is not there yet and even if it progresses quite a bit you still cannot use its output as it is suppose you ask it to write some code it will not give you the exact code you will need to take that code and you need to make modifications to it you need to extend it or you need to take a sub part of it and modify it and use it right for that you need to have a basic understanding of coding okay even now chat gpt you can use to write parts of code and you need to understand how to use that code and do your job you need to modify that code according to your purpose all right so it's like um, uh, driving a car and understanding how to repair a car right everyone can drive a car they just need to learn driving but only uh, mechanics will understand how to repair it right so you you are students of computation branches so don't think that okay if i just know how to use office and excel and chat gpt i will uh, I, my job is done no it's not like that even to give proper prompts to chat gpt you should understand how it is working you should understand what prompts to give how to speak how will it think right so having a basic understanding of coding is important for everything you do for future courses advanced courses that you're going to do and uh, even for your placements so if you are interested in any software developer jobs or whatever almost 90% of jobs are related to coding i mean the interviews will focus on coding so they will either ask you to write an algorithm to solve a problem or they may ask you to implement this algorithm in some language or write a pseudo code or implement it in some language and then they may ask you to optimize your code further okay now how do you make your code faster or how do you reduce the time complexity of your program or how do you reduce the space complexity of your program so these kind of skills are looked for when uh, during your interviews right so again there coding is important 
all the other courses which you learn later there will be few questions in the interviews related to those courses there will be more questions in your interviews related to these three courses so it's like you need to revise these again in third and fourth year okay so it's better you focus on them right now than you know uh, hustling in the last minute okay so that is one thing and even if you are interested in uh, higher studies like ms your projects play a major role right it's your projects that help you in uh, getting admission at a good institute so again your projects will involve a lot of coding component maybe it may be building a website or it may be building an app or it may be solving a problem everything it can be machine learning project it can be any project you can think of every project will involve coding so there is no escape whether you like it or not you have to get into coding okay so better be serious and sincere during this course and even these two courses ds data structures and algorithms they themselves depend on this course so this course is the most foundational course for every other computational course that you will do in the rest of your btech okay so if you do good in this course all other courses will become easy but if you don't follow this course all other courses will become difficult you will not understand anything in data structures you will not understand anything in algorithms unless you understand what is happening in this course okay so the foundations are laid in this course and it is a prerequisite for all the other courses so that is the significance of this course and like i said this course focuses on coding now coding to become good at coding one is this course there are also other avenues where you can become better at coding so another is programming club have you heard of programming club yeah we have a programming club at mu heard of that it's called uh, hurricane club so please do join that club and participate in the contest that they conduct they mainly focus on competitive programming so that makes you a better programmer a better coder i don't know how many of you heard of uh, acm icpc international uh, programming contest so it is at that level we are aiming for and whether you go up to that level or not practicing and participating in this contest in general one will make you a better programmer second it will help you in your academics as well in this course as well as future courses third it will also be an asset in your resume saying that okay i secured so and so rank uh in this programming competitions uh i secured so and so rank maybe on hackerrank.com or codechef or whatever they will help you a lot in your placements or even in your um, uh admissions abroad okay so having good coding skills is a must for any anything you want to do academics placements uh higher studies that's it okay and <clears throat> coding apart from this course and programming club the main thing is you need to do lots and lots of practice that is the main thing so don't just limit yourself to the course assignments even outside the course assignments you should practice at least a couple of hours a day coding it's like to become a better sports person you need to practice every day similarly to be become a better programmer you need to practice every day that's the only way in which you can become good at it no matter how many concepts we teach how many how much theory we teach you will not become good at it unless you practice on your own you should solve hundreds of varieties of problems so that you will understand what kind of uh, uh, concepts you need what kind of data structures you should use how can you make it faster how can you reduce the time complexity space complexity all these things you will learn only through practice okay so this is the crux and uh, i hope i sort of explain to you why this course is important and anything you see around everything has a kind of a computer in it right you see uh, every, even the daily devices which we use a washing machine or a smart watch or even an elevator everything has a microcomputer in it and it is coded in whatever language you can think of in electronics there is embedded uh, systems there is uh, embedded c and uh, in cs and ai we have uh, high level languages c python java whatever they are 
you have to use coding to build any computational device, be it a small computer, a very uh, minimum computer like a calculator, or a huge computer like a supercomputer or quantum computer, whatever they are. You need coding, you need programming. Okay? And it is pervasive. You know how pervasive computing is. It's not just the computer or PC which we use. It is there in every other form. Even this projector, every any digital device, it has a computer in it, right? So it's better you learn, you understand basics of programming so that you can get into any field you want. That is what I'm saying, okay? So it's independent of the field. Any field you want to get into, this is necessary and useful, all right? Okay. So since we are speaking of computing, so let's start with the question, what is computer science? It's not about the degree. In general, what is computer science? As the words tell us, it is science of computing. Okay, now what is computing? Any answers? What is your understanding of computing? Anyone? Anything? Yeah. Right, we give an input and we get an output. Good, one answer. Any other answers? Information, what? We require some information from the computer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We can make our life easier by making, a, you know, fully also do our work by making a bullock cut also do our work. Yes. So what? In what specific way does it make our life easier? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any other answers? I sort of got right answers. So one answer is yeah. Right. Good. Yeah. That's uh, what he tried to say, and you put it well. So information processing, computer does information processing, and uh, in other way. Like he said, it takes an input and gives a long. Any other, does it ring a bell to you? Uh, anything else does similar kind of job? This kind of, uh, so you can think of computer as a black box, which takes one or more inputs and gives an output. Did you think of, I mean, did you hear of a similar definition for anything else? Yes, yeah, someone will say. Huh? Mind, yes. Huh? Function in maths, how is a function defined? A function is nothing but you can think of it's a mapping between two sets where one or more elements from the domain maps to one element in the range. Or in other words, a function is like a black box which takes one or more inputs and gives you one output. That's it. It doesn't matter how the function works. It depends on your purpose. Now, suppose if I have a function like uh, uh, f of a b equal to a plus b whole square. I can give some input 3, 3 and 4 and it will give me some output. That's fine. Now, if I don't know that this function is a plus b whole square, it doesn't matter. If I just use out that function, I just give an input and get an output. But if you are an engineer, if you are a scientist, you want to know what this function is doing. You want to know that this is doing a plus b whole square. That is why it is giving me this particular output and not some other output. So it's not just any function, it is a plus b whole square. It is different from maybe a plus b whole cube, or it is different from maybe a square, or maybe some uh, uh, derivative function, whatever it is. So, getting in, inside that function is like opening that black box and trying to understand what exactly that function is, what is the formula. Every function is like a formula. Understanding that formula is like looking inside that black box, not understanding the formula, just giving input and getting output is like using that black box. Okay, so it's up to you. If you just want to be a user of that black box, you are like any other normal user. But if you want to get inside that black box, if you want to open it up and see what is happening inside, then you are like an engineer. Right? So that is what we want to do with computers also. So computer is not just the machine which we use, the PC or that kind of a thing. Computer science deals with the idea of computing. That is why anything which does computing is a computer. Right? So it can be a smartwatch, it can be elevator, it can be washing machine, it can be microwave oven, whatever it is, all these are computers. And we want to understand how they work. We want to understand what is the 
what is inside the black box, right? So, opening up a computer does not mean taking a physical computer and opening it up. You will not understand. Even if you open it up, you will not understand what is happening inside. Because what is actually happening inside is processing. It's the code running. It's instructions flowing. It's like electricity flowing inside. So, how is the electricity flowing inside? How are the instructions flowing inside? Understanding that is understanding the computer. Okay, and that involves coding or programming. All right, in rounds. Okay, so computer is also like a function to put it bluntly. It is like a black box. It takes some inputs, it gives you an output. Now, you can be either just like a user of a computer, which many people do for different purposes. Many people, uh, even our parents or uh, siblings or uh, even kids nowadays use computers. They know how to use computers. That does not mean they are engineers. They just know how to use the black box. But we need to be different from them. We need to look inside this black box and understand what is happening. Right? So, for instance, um, now I am using some software. It is allowing me to write. Or suppose I am using Excel. Uh, say I give a list of numbers and I want to sort them. So what is my input? I give, I enter the list of numbers and I press a button, say sort. Now the output is the list of numbers sorted. Okay. So I am giving some input. It is giving me some output. If I don't know how it is working, I am just a user. But if I know what it is doing, if I know what sorting algorithm it is using, uh, or if I want, to, if I know how to speed it up, or uh, if I know can I change the format so that it makes sorting easier for the tool, right? Understanding all these things is engineering. So that is like opening up the black box and uh, uh, understanding what is happening. Or if I send an email, that is an input. I type the content and I press the send button. Now the output is this email lands in someone's inbox. Now what is happening in between? Understanding that is computer science. Like how is it ensuring that this, this email is going only to that person and not some other person? How is it ensuring that it is safe and secure? How is it ensuring that no one is able to hack it? Right? So all these things we need to understand. Or uh, uh, many things like you use many apps. You use Snapchat. You use uh, uh, Instagram. You use many uh, features of those apps. Like now at the click of a button, your images can be enhanced. Your images can be altered quickly. Earlier, if you had to alter your images, you have to do a lot of coding. Now there are filters. Each filter is like a function. So you press the button. That button is your input, and you'll get a new image, or you'll get an altered image. That is your output. But how is it working? How is image processing done? How does it treat an image? How does it understand an image? Right? How does it alter this image into this way? All these things involves understanding of a computer or computing. Okay. So that is what you need to understand as engineers and computer science students. And the core and the base for any other course is this course, which is programming. Okay. All right. So, so we saw computer science is the science of computing. But what is computing? Computing technically, it is derived from two Latin terms that is com and pute. Which means to settle together. Com means together and future means to settle. Now, you see, language is such an interesting thing. Just by looking at the words, if you are perceptive enough, just by looking at the words, you should be able to derive the meaning of those words. In fact, not necessarily complicated words, even the simple words which we use, if you reflect sufficiently upon them, you will understand a lot of things which you never thought that. Is contained in that word. Okay, say for instance, um, um, have you, uh, I believe almost everyone of you heard of homeopathy, right? So, how is homeopathy different from, so what is the other, uh, what is the name for English medicine? Allopathy, right? So, how is homeopathy different from allopathy? What is the difference between these two medicinal systems? Okay, can you tell me any words ending with pati? Not Hindi pati, in English. 
telepathy yeah empathy sympathy apathy antipathy sorry Right? 
So what is it made of? Sing and chronic. So what does chronic stand for? What is the root word for chronic? Sorry? It comes from chronos. What is chronos? Time. So sing chronic means at the same time. Diachronic means at different times. Anachronic means at the wrong time. <laughs> chronological means in temporal order. Right? So we say chronological order, alphabetical order, right? So these, you just look at the term. If you understand chronos, you understand all these terms. If you understand logic, you understand all the terms ending with logic. If you understand chronos, you will understand all the terms ending with uh, ending or starting or having the word phone. Right? So all these things just by observing language. That's it. You don't need to look up a dictionary. So be perceptive to language and uh, you will actually enjoy dissecting the words and uh, uh, you will enjoy the process of the amount of information revealed to you just by looking at the words. Okay. So here computer comes from the words com and computer that is to settle together. So what do we mean settling together? So to compute means given one or more inputs to settle at an output, right? Which is exactly what a computer or any computing device does. You give one or more inputs, it gives you an output. Like if I give a list of numbers and if I press the button sort, it will sort them and give me. Or if I type the content of an email and if I press send, it will send it to someone else, right? So at any point of time, you are giving an instruction and the computer is following those instructions. It can be saving a file or it can be sending a uh, content somewhere or it can be changing the content reorganizing the content, whatever it is. So that is what a computer does. In other words, to compute means to reason, right? Even the word rational, it has something to do with ratios, right? So what do we mean by ratioing? Usually we ratio numbers with each other. But in reasoning, in rational, we ratio or we weigh different arguments against each other or input and output against each other. Okay, if this is the case, then this will happen. If that is the case, then that will happen. So this is all reasoning. Okay, now within reasoning, there are two kinds of reasonings. Numerical reasoning and analytical or logical reasoning. Numerical reasoning, we all know, uh, adding numbers or multiplying, or if, uh, say, 5 is greater than 3, then uh, uh, print 5 is greater than 3, else print uh, A is less than B, something like that. That is just numerical reasoning. Any example of logical reasoning, which is non-numerical? Yeah. In fact, in the slides, in one of the earlier slides, that reasoning is there. Even that is an example. We do it day in and day out. Logical reasoning. Yeah? I'm asking question. Yeah. Asking question is like half of it. But reasoning part. What is reasoning? Any example? True or false. Okay. Fine. That is like matching. I mean, I say this table is white. True or false? I match it with reality. The statement I match it with reality. If it's true, it's true. Otherwise, it's false. Fine. That's some basic example. Any other video? Any complex thing? Yeah. Machine learning. I don't want any technical examples. Day to day, as humans, we do logical reasoning. Day to day. Huh? We look for the outcome. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Give me an example of analyzing. Yeah, how do you analyze? So analyze this and tell me what. How do you analyze? Huh? We are talking about I will. I never mentioned the word Ayurveda. Actually, I mentioned homeopathy. Okay, I didn't uh, get back to that example. So, homeopathy comes from the words homeo and pathos, right? Now, 
again, uh, you would have heard of terms like homophone, homophone, right? Uh, so, what does it mean? Homophone means similar sounding words. Homonym means same names but different meanings. Nim has something to do with name. So, homeo and homo, they have same meanings. Homeopathy means usually allopathy, what does it do? If you are affected by some virus or bacteria, allopathy introduces agents which attack this virus or bacteria, which kill this virus or bacteria. Okay? In the process, they may also attack some body cells, which is why you have side effects. Okay? But homeopathy, the terms themselves tell you, homeo means same. Alright? So in homeopathy, what you do, the technique is different. You introduce the same kind of virus or bacteria in extremely minute quantities into the body. So, so that the body understands now that some foreign agent has entered. It, when the original virus or bacteria enters, the body may not understand. But now when you inject the same virus or bacteria in extremely minute quantities, the body understands that some foreign agent has entered and I need to fight it. So the body itself fights the original virus or bacteria. In the previous case, the external agent fights the virus or bacteria, but in this case, the body itself fights the virus or bacteria. Okay, so that's why it is homeo. You are introducing the same agent which is causing the disease. In allopathy, you are introducing the opposite agent which kills the disease. Okay, so just by looking at the word homeopathy and allopathy, you understand the foundational differences, the fundamental differences between the two medicinal systems. You need not do a degree or uh, you know go to a dictionary or do a study or thesis to understand this. If you are perceptive enough, if you can understand how to dissect the words, that's it. You understand the fundamental differences between these two systems. So that's why language is important. So pay attention to language. A lot of things will be revealed to you. Okay? Yeah. Um, so we were discussing logical thinking, analytical uh, reasoning. You see, in one of the earlier slides, I told you if you miss minors, if you give a valid reason, then you will uh, uh, your answer marks will be prorated to uh, minor. If you don't give a valid reason, then you will get a zero in minors, right? This is logical reasoning, mostly if else statements. This has nothing to do with numerical reasoning. Okay, it's like uh, okay, if that person is angry, it's better not to talk to him or her right now. Let's come later when that person's food is good. Or if some vehicle is coming very fast, I should not cross the road. I am doing logical reasoning. Even here, um, you may think it is some kind of numerical reasoning. Like suppose if I am crossing the road, um, I I estimate the distance how much I should cross. I estimate the distance of the vehicle. I estimate the speed of the vehicle, and based on that, I cross the road. Right? Yes. There is some kind of, it looks like numerical reasoning is involved, but technically we are not dealing with numbers here. Because I don't know the exact distance between uh, me and the length of the road that I need to cross. I don't know how many meters I need to cross. I don't know exactly how many meters that vehicle is away from me. And I don't know exactly how many kilometers per hour that vehicle is coming at. Right? I only sort of know, you know, some uh, ranges, like it's coming fast, it's coming slow. I need to cross this much distance or I need to cross a lot of distance, right? So here also we are doing some kind of physics, but it is called common sense physics or it is called naive physics. It is a category in physics, you can look it up. It's called naive physics. We do it every day. We do it daily, in and out. We do many physics. It's like if I leave an object, if I drop an object, we know it falls to the ground. Or if there is an object on the plane, if I lift that plane at an inclined angle, we know that object slides down. For this, you don't need to know Newton's laws and you don't need to know uh, Einstein's laws. Even before Newton and Einstein were there, people were living on this earth. People were doing physics. They know that objects fall to the ground. They know that an object which is thrown into the air will again fall back to the ground. All these things we know. Right? So we have been doing physics all our lives. But that's not numerical reasoning exactly. A simple example is sports persons. When you are playing this sport, say you are playing cricket. When you are, um, say if you are batting, when the ball is coming at you, you don't think, you don't have that like, okay, that ball is coming at me at uh, 122.3 kilometers per hour at, uh, you know, 23 degrees angle, then I need to move 15 degrees this side. You don't think like that, right? All you think is, is it coming slow or is it coming very fast? Should I duck? Should I move left? Should I move right? This is what to do. This is also physics. So this is naive physics. This is common sense physics. Okay? This is not exactly numerical reasoning. This is 
reasoning with events, reasoning with categories. If this event occurs, then I'll react like this. If that event happens, then I'll react like that. So you're dealing with events, you're dealing with objects, you're dealing with people. You're not dealing with numbers exactly. Okay, so there are many such examples of logical reasoning, analytical reasoning, which are not directly numerical reasoning. Okay, so computing device enables us to outsource our mental work to it. The way physical devices like automobiles, wheels, pulleys, etc., enable us to outsource our physical work to them. Right. So what is special about a computer? All the machines which were invented before computers, they could we could outsource only our physical work to them. Be it a bullock cart or be it a wheel, be it a pulley, be it a lever, whatever they are, we could outsource only our physical work to them. So we could reduce our physical burden. But computing device is one such device where we can outsource our mental work. Like numerical calculations, or this kind of logical reasoning, or analytical reasoning, or sorting, or searching, whatever they are, all these are mental works. And we can outsource these mental works to a computer. So, like someone said, we can um, make our life easier by making a computer do some work. So, what kind of specific work? Mental work. So, that is what makes a computer extremely powerful. Right? So, we are trying to make it as powerful as humans, and uh, that is the idea of even artificial intelligence. Since uh, uh, many of you are in AI branch, you see, when we say artificial intelligence, the idea is to make computers as intelligent as humans. Now, there are two schools in this um, uh, strong AI and weak AI. Do you know? Anyone knows what is the difference between strong AI and weak AI? So, weak AI people. Uh, uh, let me start with strong AI. Strong AI people believe that computers can become as intelligent as humans and exactly like humans. It's like they can even become conscious. They will be conscious arising in them after some point. So they will be creative, innovative, conscious, sentient beings like humans. Exactly. So that is strong AI. But weak AI basically says. We don't believe that computers at any point of time in principle can become as conscious as humans or uh, as um, um, so what differentiates us from computers is that we are conscious beings, that we have a sense of I. There is a sense of me and I, or there is a sense of life, right? So these senses or this intuition cannot, I see a lot of number in there and we have been constantly disturbing it. This is the last point. Next time I see you, you just get out. So, VKI people say, get out. Yeah, do sure. So, green, the third one. Yeah, you get out. Get out quickly. Don't waste my time. <coughs> quickly. So VKI people think that uh, they can never become conscient beings like us, ascension beings like us, but they can imitate humans to the best extent possible. They can imitate to the extent that you cannot differentiate between a human and a machine. So that is what Turing test basically says. Turing test basically says say you are interacting with two uh, beings on the other side. If you are unable to tell the difference between those two beings, say you are chatting with someone. If both of them seem equally intelligent to you, although one of them is a human, one of them is a machine, but if you are unable to tell the difference which is a human and which is a machine, it means this machine is as intelligent as this human. So that is Turing test, as simple as that. Okay? So we can basically believe that machines can become as intelligent as humans in the sense that they can imitate humans, they can do everything that humans can do. It doesn't matter whether they are conscious or not. But they can do everything that humans can do. So you give an input, it will give you the output exactly as what a human would do. Okay? So that is the idea of uh, intelligence. So that's why outsourcing mental work is most complicated and most powerful. All right? So let's quickly address some questions. So suppose now this is the introduction to the course that I gave. Say, uh, Harry is having some questions and Potter is answering them. So Harry asks, how do we instruct? So how do we instruct a computing device to compute? 
by speaking to it, right? But um, does it understand English? No, we need to learn its language, right? And what is that language? It can be spoken to in many languages called programming languages, either low level or intermediate level or high level languages. So low level language is called machine language, intermediate language is called assembly language, and all the languages which we usually use are high level languages. We see C++, Python, Java, Lisp, Haskell, R programming, all, all these languages are high level languages. And uh, it is difficult to understand machine language or assembly language for humans. So, so what is the difference? Low level languages are closer to the machine and farther from humans, whereas high level languages are more human friendly and less machine friendly. So low level languages are like everything is in zeros and ones. All the instructions you give to a computer, finally it has to be converted to zeros and ones because what is it? High voltage, low voltage, everything has to be converted to that. But for us to understand that, for us to speak in that language is extremely difficult. I need to convert my thoughts into zeros and ones and then tell the computer. It's extremely difficult. Initially, we had only machine language. Later, people came one level up and they came up with something called assembly language. Still, it is farther from human uh, human understanding and human thought process. So, in assembly language, it is slightly easier, not exactly zero and ones, but still, you need to do very low level memory management. Say, for instance, if I want to add the numbers, then I have to manually tell the computer, okay, load number one in register one, load number two in register two, and then add these two numbers and load the output in assign the output in register three. Right? So I have to tell where the memory should go, where you should save uh, the content, the data, how the information should move from, yeah. So why did you learn I'm coming, I'm coming there, yeah. So this is also still relatively very low level for us to understand because I need to get into, I need to worry about a lot of integrities, where to store, how to store, whether this register has sufficient capacity to store this number or not, all these things I need to worry about. Okay, but high level languages make our job much, much easier. Now, although it is not simple natural English, I still can use like English words which make some sense to me. And then, but this high level language computer cannot understand. So, I built a translator in between. So, this translator translates my instructions in high level language to machine language, zeros and ones. So, that's exactly what a translator does. That translator can anyone tell me what is the name for the translator? Usually what to call it? Compiler or interpreter. So compiler or interpreter, what do they do? They do nothing else but translating a high level language into a low level language. Translating your instructions, your commands in whatever C, C++, Python, whatever they are, into zeros and ones. That's what a compiler or interpreter does. That's it. Now, like this question, why C? So that is our sort of answer here. I think learning a low level language will be too intimidating and learning a really high level language will hide the inner workings of the machine from me. So what to do? There is a language which balances both these things extremely well and that is C. So why C? So let me ask the reverse question. Why do you think we have so many programming languages? Why not just one? One high level, one low level, one uh, mid level. Why so many high level languages? Yeah? Yeah, they are specialized and they have, each language has its own uh, strengths and weaknesses, right? So, what is the strength of Python? Easy syntax, more user friendly, more easy for humans to understand, right? And a lot of details are hidden. Say, for instance, if I want to sort an entire array or an entire matrix or whatever it is, I may just have a function or a library which does that. I'll just say I give a matrix or a array and I'll just sort this. Okay? I need not understand what sorting algorithm it is using, how fast it will sort, or is this sorting algorithm best suited for this kind of data set? Right? Some sorting algorithms are best suited for some kind of data set, some others are best suited for other kinds of data sets. So I need not worry about that. I'll just say sort, it will sort. Or something like, uh, like I said, apps. Uh, you use Snapchat, uh, Instagram, whatever. You use many filters. Now, it doesn't matter to you how it is implementing those filters. I may say, okay, convert this image to grayscale or uh, add some uh, um, augmented uh, things like it can be mustache or it can be a cap or whatever it can be specs. So, add these things to the image. So, at the click of a button, it is doing that. How it is doing, I don't know. Right? So, Python is like that for programming languages. 
you will know some things but a lot of things are hidden you get a lot of inbuilt libraries a lot of inbuilt functions so it is good to use python to make your task easier right but as an engineer you will not understand the basics of how program works how a computer works with languages like python if you want to be a user of a programming language then yes python is good actually you will later mostly use python and some other high level languages than c but to understand the working of a computer it is better to start with c because c is at the exact the best position because it is a low level language in terms of all high level languages with respect to all the high level languages this is a low level language so to do anything you need to write a bit of code you need to understand what it is doing say to do sorting you have to write the entire function to do searching you have to write the entire function to do anything you have to write everything from scratch so that you know what kind of data structures to use so that you will know how the memory is managed you see python it is easy for human but it is slow why because a lot of details are hidden a computer needs to decide what to do so to translate your python code into machine learning uh, into machine language it takes a lot of time so python is slower c is not as human friendly as python but it is faster so if you want to develop games c and c++ are the go to languages so depending on your purpose if speed is not a criteria then and user friendliness is the criteria then you can go with python but if speed and uh, security is a criteria then you need to use other languages right so each language has its own strengths now the purpose of this course is for you not to teach any programming language it is not to teach you say if, if you are learning cooking it is not to teach you one or two recipes it is to teach you the art of cooking right so that you can make new recipes you can cook anything you want so you need to know the science of cooking so that is what we want to teach so you need to know the concepts in programming what is how do you create an array how is memory managed how do you ensure that uh, there is no memory leak how do you ensure that safety is there how do you make something faster right what is the right data structure to use so all these things you need to know so the science or the concepts behind programming are being taught so don't look at this course as a c course c is just a tool for us this course is mainly about teaching you programming concepts and the best method to teach those programming concepts is c that's all once you learn c you can learn any program any language very quickly because you know the concepts you can learn python you can learn some new language which will come later you see there are hundreds of languages it's no there is no guarantee that the language which you learn today will be there after 5 years you again have to learn that new language and for you to be able to learn it quickly you have to know the concepts so that's the best way to learn any new language right so so yeah finally so what do we learn in this course this is the syllabus so first we look at the basics of computing um then uh, introduction to c variables assignments control flows control flows are exactly what we discussed a while ago like sequence statement those are control flows so if this condition is satisfied take this branch otherwise take another branch right so you control the flow of uh, instructions and then um, we will discuss loops arrays pointers and finally functions file handling structs searching and sorting algorithms and other topics of type ones so this is the broad division broad topics for minor 1 minor 2 and nsn um these are tentative so some topics may go here and there it's uh, but mostly these will be the topics but there may be slight changes depending on how fast we cover the topics and every exam includes all the previous topics so minor 2 will include even topics between minor 1 and minor 2 and also before minor 1 because you will build up on these topics okay similarly final exam will include all the topics okay so yeah so that is all about uh, this course introduction in case you have any doubts you can ask otherwise yeah see you tomorrow